Okay, thank you very much to e-commerce Brazil and to uh, Ken Shu who introduced me to e-commerce Brazil for having me here. Um, I know we have a limited amount of time and I want to leave some time for questions, so we're going to jump right in here. Uh, this is our agenda for today, so uh, why? So the understanding the impact of social media today, we're going to touch briefly on the landscape of social media, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Um, we're going to break down the landscape and then really jump into social media methodology and some ROI and go through a bit of social media KPIs and technology and then also touch on some case studies. So this is a little bit of background on me. Um, I've got over 15 years in marketing, mostly in digital marketing. I'm a digital marketing executive with Sears, as you've found out. Uh, social media is my expert. I'm a social media maven. I kind of live for it. It's what my passion really is. And uh, I find it to be kind of very sexy, if you will. Um, probably much to my husband's chagrin. Uh, I'm a published author. One of the recent campaigns I've done has won two Can Lion Awards. And um, I have an amazing amount of passion, energy, and uh, live my life with gratitude. So that's a little bit about me. So let's just jump in here. What's the landscape? So as we look at the landscape, as you know of social media, the big ones in the middle are Facebook, Twitter, and Google. And then as we see all these other conversations surrounding, the questions come up, really where do you need to focus your time and your energy? Where do you need to look at? Where are my conversations happening? Where are the consumers? Are these networks influential? And how do I avoid wasting time on my social media strategy? So the shifting of the media landscape. If you realize if Facebook were a nation, it'd be the third largest on the earth. Twitter has 1.73 more users than Brazil has residents. And almost 30% of Latin America's population uses social networks. Most active is Argentina, followed by Brazil. So this is obviously a huge opportunity for this market. We really want to focus on looking at a popular strategy and where the world's population is. Most of the populations around the world have already peaked for social media, but that's a little bit different for Latin America if you look at this. The world population is growing at about just over 7%, as is Latin America. So there is tremendous opportunity with social media here in Latin America, as you know. And so how do we develop a social media strategy? Well, these top Brazilian retailers have already stepped in and are starting to get a little bit of great traction here. And these are all familiar to you. The most familiar to us coming from the United States would be Javianas. <laughs> Because these are obviously something that has gone worldwide for us, so we know that. But when you look at the networks here in Brazil, the ones that are really getting strong engagement rate and strong interaction are seeing that across Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. So how do you develop a strategy? Well, you want to start with your audience, and then you want to develop to create some goals, develop the strategy, and align your KPIs. And you literally want to go into that area. Why are you using social media? What is the intent of your social media? And specifically, develop your goals around that. So who are you targeting? Is it a B2B strategy? Is it a B2C strategy? Is it a B2B2C strategy? And if it's a B2C strategy, specifically, what is your demographic in that strategy? Are you going after the female buyer? Are you going after a mom buyer? Are you going after a male buyer? What is your demographic? And then where are you posting? Which networks are you using? And why have you selected those networks? YouTube is going to be a very visual network. It's really great for product launches in particular. Twitter is going to be more brand awareness, not as much ROI focus, which we'll talk about in a minute. And Facebook's really going to be ROI focus. So you're really going to want to focus on building your ads there and use technology to optimize your ads and get your return on your ad investment. And then what are you trying to say? Are you trying to engage with your customers to get customer feedback for research and development? Or are you trying to get customers to engage with you for a conversation and get customer insights? Or are you really trying to drive them down that digital funnel and get them to convert? And then we're going to talk a little bit about KPIs. So this is your social media methodology that you can follow. It's called the 4D social media methodology. Number one, discover. You really want to partner with your shareholders so that you can discover what your KPIs are supposed to be. What are those 
key performance indicators that are going to be the basis for your social media strategy. Then you want to step into defining. How are you going to define social media programs that align with the KPIs that you've developed? And really what networks are going to fulfill that KPI strategy? Next, deploy. So obviously you need to launch your programs at some point, right? You can't all just be strategy based. You're never going to get anything done. No one's ever going to find you. <laughs> so you really want to deploy next. So launch your program, get it out there, start keeping things iterating. And then the D4 is to analyze. Once you've launched, you need to analyze the results of those programs and then continue to iterate on those programs. Determine what's going on next and then refine. And then continue the process over again. When you get to analyze, you want to go back to deploy. Analyze the results and then once you've refined, deploy again. So you want to keep doing D3 and D4 almost in a cyclical manner. So how do you define KPIs and what does KPI stand for? Again, the key performance indicator, <laughs> and they allow an organization to really define and reach your goals. So number one, you want to define the organization's goal for social media. Is it to drive someone down that digital funnel and really generate revenue? Is it to create brand awareness? Is it to connect with your customers for a research basis? Or is it to do a combination of all of those things? And once you have your goals defined, you can move on to the next step, which is defining a measurable KPI. If you don't have a measurable KPI, there's no way to determine what your success is. So you really want to be specific and have it be measurable. Next, build that social media strategy aligned to that KPI, which we talked about a second ago, so that you know how to go back and measure your success. Number four, measure the success of the program aligned to that KPI. And number five, mix, stir, and succeed. You really do have a way to measure that success once you've aligned with KPIs that ladder up to your goals. And of course, your social media goals should ladder up to the business objectives so that everything is in a nice, clean line and you can, you can really attribute the success that social media is having directly to the success the company is having and vice versa. So here's how this looks. If a company's goal here is to improve customer awareness or improve brand awareness, your goal could be improve social awareness and consideration. A sample KPI for that would be to increase your fan base 20% within the next 12 months, for example. So this is the way you would find a goal and with a KPI that is specific and measurable attached to that goal. Another one would be increase overall engagement 5% within the next 12 months. Again, a specific KPI attached to a goal that is specific to social media, but that can also be specific to the company's goal. If you want to look at improving customer experience, which is very important to most companies these days, you can attach a social media goal of improving social media, sorry, leveraging social media to improve customer experience. So how do you attach a social media KPI to that? Increasing and decreasing customer sentiment. So you want to increase your positive customer sentiment by X percentage. You want to base that on what your current customer sentiment is positive and you want to decrease negative customer sentiment by X percentage. So you, I would first recommend that you use a tool such as a Radian 6 or social media listening tool to determine what your existing customer positive sentiment number is and your existing negative customer sentiment is. Look at what the industry's ratio is and then determine what you can move that number by in a reasonable ratio to line that KPI. Next, what's very important is obviously driving e-commerce business via social networks. So how do you do that? You can look at a couple of things. Determine the number of social posts that should be aligned with commerce. In the retail industry, it's usually about 30%. It's usually a 30-70% split. 30% of your posts should be commerce related, 70% should be engagement related. And that means 30% are going to have some sort of a deal, some sort of great offer in them. And the other 70% are going to be some kind of sponsored story, some kind of story or engaging post, some kind of great visual of a baby or a puppy that's going to get everyone happy and talking and sharing. Um, and the other 30% are going to be something they're going to click on and buy or click on and share because it's a great deal. The other one you might want to do is achieve an X percent site to visit ratio. So you're driving those conversions from your social networks down to your e-commerce site. 
So these are the types of KPIs you can ladder up. How do you get that to happen, right? So that's great information, but how do you make it happen? The way you make it happen, number one, leverage technology. If you don't have technology working for you, it's likely working against you. Facebook is a massive technology machine. YouTube is a huge technology machine powered by Google. Twitter, these are all massive technologies. And if they're not working for you, they're working against you because they're on massive algorithms, right? Everything that shows up on your page on Facebook and on your consumer's page is specific to that consumer. So we really want to make sure we're leveraging technology. A couple of types of technology. Social response platforms, and um, we'll mention a few in a minute. SMMS, pretty much the same thing, social media monitoring systems, um, measurements. Uh, Ken shoes here we use for uh, ad management. Uh, we use them to measure fractional attribution on uh, revenue and uh, also to launch social media ads. Uh, you can use Adobe for some of this stuff. You can use Omniture for last click attribution depending on what you want to do. Commitment. Can't stress this enough. Choose a strategy, select your goals and KPIs, and stick with them. You will have very limited success if you continue to wave and shift. You'll have much stronger success if you commit to your strategy, if you commit to your customers, and if you commit to your content. Content is king. And really, people are looking for the best type of content. And so you want to really commit to all three of those things, your strategy, your customer, and your content. And then moving forward, your network selection, right? So you can't be out there kind of dating social media networks. You have to get married to them. <laughs> you have to pick which ones you want and really make a commitment. So if you're going to be out there, decide which ones you're going to get married to and stick with them. Um, you know, the top two here in Latin America, and particularly in Brazil, are Facebook and YouTube. I think you'll see Twitter making a little more movement forward, but right now it's Facebook and YouTube, so I'd recommend you decide to get married to those two right now. <laughs> so here's some um, social media technology. There are a couple other I've walked around and met today that are really good ones, particularly here there are some Hootsuite competitors here in Brazil that are taking a step forward um, to do social media management and social response platforms. Um, Kenshu is, is here in Brazil. This is a great one for social ad management and that I would recommend you chat with or just outside the door here. Um, I'm not sure of the other ones that are here, but social media listening platforms, so you can really hear what your customers are saying, determine who the influencers are, and really invest in who the influencers are on your platforms. And then making the commitment we've talked about, so I'm going to move through this. The last three ones I want to talk about are these network selections. So Facebook. Facebook is really where you can see the best ROI. So if you're focusing heavily your social media strat strategy on ROI, push forward into Facebook because that's where you're going to get your ROI right now. They have so many ad products. The best ones so far are uh, Newsfeed, these Italian leather flats here that you see on the screen. These ones will pop up on your Newsfeed. These are the types of ad you'll see in Newsfeed. Gifts, gift cards are probably coming soon to this market. When someone's birthday, you can say happy birthday on someone's wall. You can give them a gift card. So this is a new feature. This is a fantastic feature for an e-commerce retail because this is a digital gift card. And it is a free marketing program from Facebook, if you can imagine they did something free for you. And what they do is allow you to give them a free gift card as the consumer. It's free for the brand. And really, it's just a um, way for the consumer to give them a gift card, for them to redeem it. You get all the data back. And my guess is eventually they'll charge a consumer a little bit of money to give that gift card. But it's a great way for brands to get out there in front of consumers and build their brand. There's page posts. There's a way to get people to like your page. That's directly in the news feed. There's offers you can sponsor directly in the news feed. There are custom audiences. You can upload your email database match it with Facebook's emails. The match rate is usually just above 70%. And then you can target information directly to everyone who's on your email database as well. So this is actually a really great way to improve your Facebook marketing. And then fa Facebook's now coming out with TV spots as well. So there are a lot of different ways you can, you can use Facebook to improve your ROI. There are tons of other ones, but these are kind of the key. And then, oh, 
let me not forget, Facebook retargeting, FBX. This is specific, anyone who goes to your website, if you're familiar with retargeting, they put something in the basket, they leave without, without purchasing, they check, you know, they abandon the cart, they're on Facebook later, let's say 20 days later, you can serve them up an ad automatically, retarget them an ad, beautiful thing, nice graphic, a specific deal to that customer, boom, you've just retargeted them a specific product and deal that they abandon out of their cart. This has got one of the highest ROIs I've ever seen in social media, and it's working very, very well because it's behaviorally targeted. YouTube, there's a couple of unique things on YouTube. Um, the right one here is um, an in-search ad that you see sponsored up on the top on the right. The top one, that lovely fight versus, I think he's fighting against pizza, you'll see there. That is actually a homepage takeover that Gillette did just today here in Brazil. So they've taken over the home page of YouTube and it scrolls entirely on your screen so you literally can't go to YouTube without seeing this ad. It is a very expensive option, but it captures an intense amount of attention. And if you click through, it obviously will drive you to the Gillette page. This 4G Max option here is a double one. It's a display ad on the right and it's an overlay ad on the bottom. And it's an interesting display option here. It drives you to to subscribe to the YouTube channel, but it also drives you to um, sign up for this MasterCard. So it's two different options. And then the one on the bottom right here is actually a specific display overlay ad to claim an offer. So they've got a lot of options. They also have a retargeting option in a couple of different ways. You can take a video and anyone who's seen a video previously of yours, you can retarget so that you know people are interested in that specific video again. The other thing you can do is retarget an ad. So if somebody has seen your video and you know that they like your products, you can retarget an offer specifically to them and you'll have a much higher chance of a click-through rate and likely a higher chance of conversion rate. Lastly, they have shoppable videos. So there's a couple things that are interesting about this. This is most important for people who have apparel. If you do, an, if you, and it's better if you do it in pre-production, if you shoot a commercial in pre-production that has apparel in it, highlight the apparel in enough ways that you can um, click on the apparel. What happens on YouTube is they can then put annotations either with the apparel or they can put the pieces of apparel on the side or below it. And you can click them directly on YouTube now or they can buy it through a conversion rate to your e-commerce website. It's got about a 40% uh, click-through rate and the ability to buy it directly on YouTube is new. So the click-through rate's about 40%. It works very, very well for apparel in particular. Twitter. Twitter right now, terrible ROI. This is not where you want to go for ROI. This is where you want to go for customer engagement, uh, more brand awareness. This is more of a top of funnel activity. You're going to see ROI similar to any other mass media channel like television. However, it's shifting very soon. So these are the types of activities you see right now on Twitter. Promoted trends, promoted tweets, promoted handles. Coming soon though, there's also Twitter parties and chats which are very good for brand engagement. Coming soon, you're gonna have Twitter cards which are brand new in beta. I just saw those last week. These are gonna be little cards that when you put an offer up and somebody says, claim that offer, on the back end, you as the brand, will get that person's name, email, and Twitter handle. So it will build your social media profile for your brand, but more importantly, it can build a loyalty program, can build your email database, and it will convert those offers for you. So it's very good for lead generation, it's very good for um, consumer databases, it's very good for your loyalty programs. Also, they're coming up with TV integration for Twitter. So when you run a commercial on your television, what will happen is that conversation that's going on on Twitter right now will also be able to, you'll be able to put an offer on Twitter at the same time. So you can integrate your mass media with your social media at the same time. So it's a very nice integration. And then there's a wonderful little rumor going around that Twitter's gonna be doing retargeting in the next, I'd say, six months. And if you'll see, there's a lot of similarities with what Twitter's doing compared to what Facebook has done. They seem to let Facebook try it out, and if it does well, then Twitter launches it. So I'm going to show you um, maybe two things on social media in action, and then I'm going to open up for questions. 
Here's the first one. Um, Virgin American Airlines has got um, a really good Twitter following and uh, blog going, as well as their Facebook fans. But what they did, this little guy in the corner is a real dog, although he looks like a character. His name is Boo. He's become their tech liberty. This is probably similar to your penguin. So Boo is, <laughs> is uh, a real dog that they have a little red carpet area for on the plane. Boo writes a little blog for them, and he has become like a tech liberty. So as you've seen with Penguin now, these tech liberties can become a real great following for people. They get a lot of engagement, and they're relatively inexpensive. And people get very excited by them, and they can drive a great ROI because the cost is so low, and the return on consumer investment is very high. So getting a tech liberty like this is a great idea. You've seen it with, with Penguin. This is the case study with Boo for um, Virgin America. Target recently, this summer, has started using one hashtag in everything. So they've got summer up hashtag across everything from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram to their TV commercials. This is a very smart idea. And they're also using it in their stores, their brick and mortar stores. Including a single hashtag creates a continual conversation on all of your social networks. And when you can integrate it consistently across everything, then you can follow that conversation. And a lot of times, people will be having a conversation use that hashtag and it won't even be about your brand, but you'll get the benefit of it. So this is the beauty of using one single hashtag across an entire campaign and an entire season. And they've done a very good job with this. And then this is a good case study on a very small business. This business is run by a, a single solopreneur, I'd like to say, a small entrepreneur. She maybe has 25 employees, but she really does a great job. Her whole business was built on Twitter, and she uses Facebook as storytelling to really build her business. And so you can see this is a great way of bragging without bragging. She says, Dr. Sims Dental Practice in Lincoln Park just ordered 63 dozen cupcakes to send to the referral partners. Do you think they're encouraging cavities? <laughs> so she does a great job of using storytelling to say, hey, we're booming in our business. So it's a, it's a bragging, but without bragging. So she, she is great at storytelling. And her business has been growing three digit percentages year over year over year. She started as a food truck one single food truck baking cupcakes in the Chicago area and has really just exploded. So those are some really good case studies to show you the differences in using tech liberties, how you can really integrate hashtags across all the networks, and how you can use storytelling to really engage your client base and to grow your business in a completely organic, free way. I think I did it, perfect. Just enough time for questions. We have about 15 minutes for questions. 